One one is the scoreline. At least we got something on the board today. But unfortunately, um, I can't really blame AFC Wimbledon too much for the goal conceded because Shrewsbury Town just managed to uh, to pull a rabbit out of the hat and uh, just play really really good one two touch football and in, in, uh, that particular play. The build-up play was pretty solid from them. And 2-2 uh, Morecambe against Accrington. 1-1 one, one Fleetwood against Cambridge. At least Doncaster lost their game today. Uh, Crew Alexander are losing their game. But for the most part, relatively neutral results. It is what it is. I think AFC Wimbledon today uh, took a bit of a step back in overall performance. I think each game they're getting better and better and better. And that last time out against Ipswich, even though it was a fairly slow first half, uh, despite conceding two goals from uh, counterattacks, I think the uh, the play was decent against Ipswich. In terms of chronological order, I think the first half, really not too much to talk It's been a common theme lately for AFC Wimbledon. First half, not too much to talk about. Uh, Shrewsbury had a decent bit of possession in the first 10 minutes or so, but then they kind of just resorted to kicking the ball upfield to Udo and to, to Bowman and be like, go get it. Go knock the ball down for us. And I think for the most part, Daniel Udo did a decent job on the holdup. If he wasn't going up against Hennigan, who won 90% of the headers, in my opinion. Uh, you know, he did decent on the holdup. But uh, I think overall, AFC Wimbledon's shape defensively was good. I think Shrewsbury, really, their only very notable spell was in between, like, the 55th to 65th or 60th to 70th minute. A 10-minute spell where they were creating chances after chances after chances. One of those chances, I think the first chance, really, of that spell came from the goal by Daniel Udo. They kind of changed momentum around a little bit. And um, there were a couple of instances where they put crosses into the box. Uh, Ablade really did not have much to do today, considering that we didn't give him too much service. But at the same time, I, I think that Ablade just looked a little bit too uh, isolated up there, in my opinion. So we'll work on that as the season rolls on. I think Cosgrave was a positive influence when he did come on. Uh, in terms of the hold up, he, he played it, you know, played Rodoni on, on the overlapping run a couple of times. And uh, Cosgrave coming on in that second half, I didn't think it was a. Okay. I didn't think it was a terrible idea considering that we needed more of a target man presence. But at the same time, I didn't agree with the bloody coming off for Cosgrave. I think playing a two up top, a formation change certainly would have worked. But at this point. It's not worth clamoring for a two up top, two up top, because Mark Robinson's never going to play a two up top. Let's be honest. He's, uh, I'm getting to the point of the season, you know, I, I'm pretty optimistic myself, but I'm getting to the point of the season where I'm starting to turn on Mark Robinson a little bit, where he's very stubborn, right? And he's going to continue to play, to play that four, two, three, one. While I don't think Cosgrave coming on in itself was a bad idea. Uh, considering that we needed somebody to hold the ball up a little bit, because Ablade, uh, even though he wasn't getting the service, you know, at times, uh, you know, the other team was winning headers over him, and Ablade has a good leap. To be fair, he jumps very high, but he wasn't necessarily winning balls for us uh, on the knockdowns, and so I think Cosgrave, um, we played it to his feet a lot. We didn't actually play it to his head too frequently, but uh, you know, he did well in the holdup. I think. Having him playing alongside Terry Ablade. I did mention this on the stream, actually, but Aaron Cosgrave. Not only do we need to make a change in terms of playing a two-up top, but Aaron Cosgrave would certainly benefit off of a two-up top. Because uh, from what I noticed in his highlights when I first reacted to him being signed for AFC Wimbledon, he likes to hook out He likes to hook out wide. When he plays the holdup, he likes to play the pass and hook out to receive the return through ball. He likes to use his pace and then kind of trickle back towards the center as the through ball is being played down the center or he likes to hook out wide and then if, if the through ball is played out wide he'll run onto it with pace and take a couple touches out wide to look to play it into somebody uh, down the center and having Cosgrave playing up top not only is the like for like substitution for Cosgrave for uh, Ablade maybe not the best idea but at the same time Cosgrave playing up top by himself is not necessarily conducive to success because I feel like Cosgrave would be better, like I said, playing the ball out than spinning out, maybe laying it off to that secondary striker to which the striker could play a short seven-yard pass on the ground back to Cosgrave. I think that would certainly benefit us. Tomas did come on and 
He did look pretty spry, looked pretty quick on the ball, and he drew the foul on the left hand side by uh, you know utilizing some trickery. But other than that, he you know he did get dispossessed a couple of times, Tomas, and I still think he's just working, you know, just trying to get his uh, his first leg up, and um, I'm sure he'll work his way into the side eventually. But I think you know having Mabude coming on would have been the better idea. A little bit more of an experience, even though he is still fairly young. He's a bit more experienced uh, as an AFC Wimbledon player. He knows the the team a little bit more, knows the ins and outs. And I think he could have been a decent substitution trying to break for pace. But And I think that with that signing with Lee Brown, I've mentioned before, or I've mentioned in my, uh, on my Twitter account at JaggyKM, as well as the Facebook group, that the Lee Brown signing, even though it was a good one, it's an indication that AFC Wimbledon are going to approach the rest of the season with a conservative and defensive mindset. And I think it'll be just enough for them to stay up, in my opinion, as I think Lee Brown is a quality defender, will uh, give us that veteran presence, that veteran leadership. And I think he's a very good defender all around. If we do get a striker, it's probably not going to be one that'll break the bank per se, considering that we're probably going to be forking up like four four thousand plus pounds per week for uh lee brown's wages but i think lee brown did fairly well for the most part uh for the shrewsbury goal i think lee brown was a little bit too central it was just really good one two touch football uh played there from shrewsbury not much afc one could have done there i think uh defensively their shape was solid in the first half the second half they started to look a little bit leaky in the back started to look a little shaky uh but i think the likes of brown Osu, uh, Hennigan, I think they were very clinical in, in their own final third. At times when they received possession, they kind of dribbled it out of the back and played it out of the back at times. And uh, kind of risky in those instances, but it goes to show that Lee Brown, you know, experienced player, quality, not afraid to play it out of the back. Paul Osu may be starting to, uh, you know, improve a little bit overall uh, in terms of uh, quality on the ball. And that's not to say that his quality on the ball is lacking, because on the offensive final third, he's always a threat, right? He's always going to be looking to take it to his right foot, blast it towards goal, or just uh, you know try to look to put a cross in. Uh, but defensively, I think also he's gotten a little bit better too. Defensive shape, I think he was okay today. Uh, just that one goal, unfortunately. Lately, we've been conceding, we've been being punished for the little mistake that little mistakes that we've been making lately. So, man of the match for me. I'm going to say uh, Rudy. I think Jack Rudoni was uh, pretty quality on the ball. I think he, he had a, a shot low and hard that he drove past just past the post on one instance. And then uh, Rudy won a couple of headers. He tried to take his men on 1v1, and there were a couple of times in which he did successfully uh, beat his man for pace. Rudoni here. And there was also an instance in which Rudoni received it at the top of the 18. His first touch was brilliant. His first touch with his left foot took him down the 18-yard line. And he was about to wind up for a shot, and he got brought down by Ebanks Lendell. To me, that looked like a penalty. Uh, as Ebanks Lendell stuck his foot out, maybe it wasn't, it was the slightest of contact, right? But it was enough contact. I think it looked to me like uh, Radoni ran into the thigh or the knee of uh, Ebanks Lendell. It's enough. And there was also another instance about 10 minutes earlier where the ball pin uh, pinballed around a little bit. With the keeper spilling uh, the ball after a uh, free kick whipped in by McCormick. Uh, the keeper was trying to grab the ball and the defender tried to head it away at the same time. The keeper spilled it, bounced around a little bit, fell to the feet, uh, feet of Rodoni. There were like four play uh, Shrewsbury players around Rodoni. And uh, Rodoni got tripped up a little bit. And I still, that I think both instances were not clear penalties. But they were enough to be deemed penalties fairly harsh if I'm honest I think the referee kind of had a bit of a stinker today I think he also was a little bit inconsistent with the fouls sometimes he would give fouls uh from instances that didn't look like fouls and he would give uh he wouldn't give fouls of instances that instances that did look like fouls I'm not going to blame it on the ref because I think AFC Wimbledon today kind of took like I said took a little bit of a step back from the last performance against Ipswich it wasn't a terrible performance by any means but you know, the formation, 4-2-3-1, didn't work, again, as usual. And, um, again, I'm not using that as an excuse, but I think the referee certainly did its dirty. And I think he did. I, well, maybe Hennigan could also be a candidate for me because I think uh, first-half statistics that I was seeing was uh, 
Headers won 14. Clearances made like 12 or something like that for AFC Wimbledon. Most of those definitely by Ben Hennigan. I think he was very good in the air. Won probably 80% of the aerial duels that he was uh, he was thrown at them. That was thrown at him, rather. And uh, I think he did a fairly good job defensively overall, Ben Hennigan. And so, overall, AFC Wimbledon did enough not to lose. But it's just one of those games where the goals are few and far between. The, the goal itself was a decent one where um, Chislet and uh, Asal, uh, you know, connected with one another. Asal played Chislet through, and then Asal hooked towards the center and made a run. Chislet played a nice little chip pass over to uh, Asal, and Asal was able to steer it towards goal. And so a uh, decent goal there from Asal, finally getting on the score sheet for the first time in a long time. All right, it is that time of the video where I... Uh, React to some uh, comments. I'm going to be focusing mainly on the Facebook group this time around. So let's take a look. Uh, Ed Haver, Shrewsbury were, uh, Shrewsbury were shite until they realized that they were up against when this team is going to. When is this team going to stop looking for the perfect goal scoring opportunity and cut out all the tippy tappy crap? Real missed opportunity today. A bloody off is harsh. Doesn't have to be like for like. And that's uh, the comment that I actually... I actually read this... I cheated a little bit. I read this comment before uh, talking about my analysis of like-for-like -like substitutions. And so, yeah, the, the responses were fairly in coordinates with uh, James Bruce. Like I said, Terry Ablotti didn't really get the service too much. And, you know, I don't think it was a terrible idea to have Ablotti coming off for Cosgrave. But there's always that possibility they, they could play two up top with Ablotti and Cosgrave playing alongside one another. That would mean that we would have had to take off either a Sal, who I think started to work his way into the game uh, towards the uh, middle of that second half, or, uh, you know, Marsh or McCormick, and I think both of those players were playing pretty well. So I guess I could defend Mark Robinson in the, in the sense that all the midfielders were doing enough on the day not to get subbed out, but I still think it would have been nice to see a two up top there. At Mark Buswell, tell a at AFC Robbo to stop doing his transfer business in David Lloyd Cafe. Get a forward sign for fuck's sake. I'm not entirely sure what the David Lloyd Cafe is. But, uh, you know, plenty of people were certainly... Can't fault the performance massively, but we need to win these games at Ryan McGinty 2 Certainly, yeah. I mean, plenty of uh, fans are expressing... I shouldn't say frustration, because the performance... It wasn't terrible. I mean, it, it was... Yeah, there were a few chances here and there created by Wimbledon, but, you know, I think it was the players were played victim to the formation this time around more so than the players were uh, at fault for poor performances. I don't think that the latter was the case. But that being said, I'm going to leave it off on that note. Um, fairly tired. I think I'm going to be taking a nap in a, in a little bit because I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> That's what happens when I wake up early, but I'm doing it for the dawns. I'm doing it for the cause. That being said, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one.